All right, so here's a question. If you could save your unborn child's life in the future, would you do it? Of course, the answer is yes. And with a simple process of banking your baby's cord blood, you could be making a choice that would potentially provide a life-saving treatment for your child or maybe even a family member. And here to help us understand the true value of cord blood banking is Maury Kraus, Chief Science Officer from Viacord. Good morning. Good morning. It's Thank a pleasure so to be here. Thank you so much for being here. This is a, a, a wonderful topic to talk about because I, I feel a lot of mothers who are pregnant are not well informed about Viacord. And in fact, we have a story, a very special story, about a child named Trinity. And mm -hmm. before we talk about Viacord, let's take a look at this story, if you will. Sure. I'm Jeff, my wife Amber, and our youngest daughter Trinity, and our oldest Paris, and this is Taylor. Taylor got sick shortly after her first birthday, and then um, we found out it was leukemia. We heard about Viacord through our oncologist. There's this new thing out where we take the, the umbilical cord blood and we, we freeze it and we can use it as a transplant. So we decided to store Trinity's cord blood and on the off chance that we would need it. And, uh, and it turns out we did. And now that Taylor's healthy, every little thing that happens in her life, it, it's like the first time again. Without Viacord, uh, Taylor's cord blood transplant wouldn't have happened. The best time to find out about cord blood preservation, I think, is if you're gonna plan a family. Such a moving story. What a difference, and it saved a sibling's life. I'm sure you hear that a lot. We do hear that a lot, more and more. Over 600,000 families have chosen to bank their baby's umbilical cord blood to date, and we are see more and more uh, opportunities to use that cord blood in life-saving indications like this. And I can't help but think of a family that I know. They've been waiting for a bone marrow transplant for their son, and to no avail. It's very sad. And, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe this could have been an option for them? Well, do they, does the child have siblings? Yes. Yes. Yeah, if they had chosen to bank the child, the, the uh, siblings' cord bloods, it may have uh, been an option for that family. And I, I hear that a lot, too. You do. Those are regret that they hadn't. So done. let's talk about making that decision. You know, why should a mother expecting do this? Well, the, um, it, it provides another medical option in the case of some of these uh, serious diseases. There have been over 80 diseases that today are treatable with cord blood. And there are more emerging areas of therapy, which include cerebral palsy and type 1 diabetes, where we think cord blood is going to make an even stronger impact. And it's, it's often hard when you're thinking um, about this option at the time of the birth. You have a lot of things to think about, mm -hmm. the nursery and uh, getting the crib ready and right. the stroller and everything. But this is an important uh, decision that you have to think about prior to the baby's birth, because it's a one-time opportunity to collect the cord blood. And it's very simple. I mean, some people think painful, hurtful to the mom and child. It really isn't. And can you walk us through it? Yeah, this is very safe and, uh, by, by the way, non-controversial in terms of stem cells. Uh -huh. uh, the baby uh, comes with stem cells, and the placenta and cord have stem cells in them. And after the baby is born and the uh, doctor separates the baby from the umbilical cord, it's very easy for any birthing professional to then drain the cord blood into a, a bag, which can be shipped to our laboratories where we process it for freezing. Okay, and can you talk to me about the storage? How does that work? Yeah, this is also a very simple process. We just remove some of the red blood cells, uh, essentially purifying the stem cells. And then we put them into a storage container, a bag uh, that is cryopreservable, and we freeze that at liquid nitrogen temperatures, which is minus 196 degrees, uh, about 196 times the, is cold, colder than your freezer. And it can be there for how long? Uh, now, for right now, uh, we believe it can be there in, uh, more or less indefinitely, certainly oh. for the lifetime of the individual. Units have been used that are 12 to 15 years of age. When it's stored at that temperature, there's really uh, no biological degradation to speak of. And so you could have this available for you later in life when you're encountering uh, either autoimmune diseases or degenerative diseases. And it can make such a difference like we saw in Trinity's story. It can. It can. What a wonderful story to hear. Great information. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. And again, if you want more information on cord blood banking, just go to viacord.com. <laughs>